Hi, this is Brother Tony, and this lecture is about how to use the laser cutter. So first of all, so the objective is to prepare the acrylic. Number two, use Corel Draw. Number three, print the nameplate. Okay, so prepare the acrylic. The laser cutter can take up to a 24 inch by 18 inch piece of material. So if you have something bigger than that, many acrylic um, pieces are bigger than that, uh, one of the things you can do is use a band saw to cut that down to size. What you want to have is a 4 inch by 3 inch uh, piece of acrylic and we're going to cut that then using the laser cutter into a 3.5 by 2 inch piece of acrylic. Okay, so what you'll do for second objective, first of all, open up Corel Draw. Number two, you'll have a create a new document. Save your document as something that you'll recognize. Don't worry about the width and the height at this time. When you get into Corel Draw, right here, now right there, you have the width and the height. That's very important that you modify that to fit the size of your piece of acrylic. Remember, you will cut this down to size, but your original size will be roughly 4 inches by 3 inches. When you get into the screen, what you want to do is you'll have a box that measures 4 inches by 3 inches. If you go to the upper left, click and drag that to the edge of the box. What that will do is set your axes, your ruler, on both the horizontal and the vertical to 0 and 0. That's going to really help you to uh, create your nameplate. Now before we go on, something to remember about the laser cutter slash engraver. It will cut material and it will engrave material. So there's two different ways you have to, if you want to make something, if you want to cut something, you have to set it up to cut versus engrave. So the first thing, remember we have this roughly 3 inch by 4 inch piece of material. On the left hand side of your toolbar, you will see straight line connector tool. Click on that and then go up to the top of the box. You will have to click on the box there, drag that down and click again to make that line. Go to the left hand side, click on the box, slide that over, click there. Now what I don't show but what you need to do is on the bottom right hand corner you will see an icon that looks like a quill. Double click on that and it's called the outline pen. For this area that we're actually going to cut, what you need to do under width, you need to change that to hairline. After that, you go in and press and on the left hand side of the toolbar, you'll see the text box. Create a text box, put in your name, your partner's name, whoever the nameplate is for. And then you change the width by once again double clicking the quill on the right hand, bottom right hand side, the outline pen, and change the width to 0.5. What that allows it to do, it allows the program to understand what's a cut versus what is an etching. Now you're just about ready to use the laser cutter. First thing, go in the back room, turn on the exhaust fan. The acrylic, when you use the laser cutter, that acrylic will um, give off some fumes, so we want to exhaust it, vent it to the outside. Second, turn on the power to the laser cutter. Third, you will see a compressor on the left hand side of the laser cutter. Turn that on there. Turn on the laser cutter switch there. Once all of those are on, now go back to Corel Draw and click on Print. When the menu comes up, first of all, under Printer, you will select Epilogue Engraver Win32. And for the page, select Use Printer Default Landscape. After you have done both of those, click on Preferences.
Now, we Central Catholic owns a 40-watt Epilog Mini Helix with 600 dpi dots per inch resolution. This comes right out of, that picture comes right out of the user manual. So we are, or you are, cutting acrylic. So the raster, to do raster, which means engraving, you need a speed of 100 and a power of 50. To do vector cutting, and I take it, it is between a quarter, eighth inch and a quarter inch, so you would have speed, it would do 10, 100, 5,000. So right here, this epilogue engraver Win32 properties, that's what pops up when preferences is selected. So under raster, you see that the speed is 100%, the power is 50%. Under vector, the speed is 10%, the power is 100%, the frequency is 5,000 Hertz. The job type is combined. The sizes. Now, these sizes have to match up to what you put in in Corel Draw. So horizontal is 4 inches, vertical is 3. If they do not match up, you more than likely will not get a correct etching. And finally, under options, autofocus. Now, this is very important. The laser cutter costs $18,000. Now, it's very unlikely, unless you intentionally want to break it, that you can do permanent damage. However, you need to make sure that all of these settings are done correctly. And you want to take care of it, just like you take care of a car. It's that expensive. Now, one thing you might see is you might see a warning sign. You can click on that, and usually what this is, it'll be output, output doesn't fit on media, meaning, you know, when you made your line to make the cut, to actually cut the acrylic, maybe that line is just slightly above the medium. Don't worry about that. That won't affect anything. Okay, once you have done all the preferences in the print screen and you click OK, you will see, if everything is done correctly, you go to the laser etcher and you'll see the job and the name of the job that you named it. You put the acrylic down, it's kind of hard to see, and make sure right here, this is the laser engraver slash cutter piece. If it is not in the upper left hand corner, there's something wrong. So if that happens, press the stop button. If at any time you think something is wrong, or you're not even not sure, ask me. Ask somebody, do not start until um, you're comfortable with starting. And when you are comfortable, the green button is go. After that, you start and you let the um, laser cutter do its work. If you think something is wrong, press stop and call me over. We can always restart this. This takes maybe two minutes to do one of these. And this is what you'll get, something like this. If I did not mention it before, your nameplate, the width, it'll be three and a half inches long by two inches high. That's the size of the nameplate. You can use any type of font to that, but make sure all of the names fit on there, and you turn that into me. Okay, that's it. Good luck. And uh, make sure you've taken good notes so you can get right to work because you won't have a lot of time in class.